I am Jay Scrilla, a.k.a. Love Jones. I have a band called The Love Jones Experience that you guys should check out if y'all never heard it. I think y'all enjoy it. Um, the hardest thing for me today was trying to decide like what material to do because we're celebrating right, love, right? And we're celebrating black history and we're celebrating blackness and culture. So there's so many poems to choose from, but uh, I'm gonna do a couple pieces that if you've been here before, you may have heard them before. If you haven't, they're new to you. So hope y'all enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna do a piece about love. I'm gonna do a piece about history. So what y'all wanna hear first? Y'all want the love? Or the history? History. 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 That's resounding. <laughs> I do two poems about the history? Okay. We'll talk after this one. Came here to learn and teach. Oh, God. Beautiful thing. Me too. Well, uh, in that case, anybody familiar with the, the Underground Railroad? Yeah. yeah. Raise your hand if you are no the Underground Railroad. If you're maybe Underground Railroad. Ever heard of it or whatever? Okay. Now, uh, how many people in the room, by a show of hands, and don't be embarrassed, because my hands won't stay up. Uh, when you first heard about the Underground Railroad, you thought it was an actual railroad. <laughs> how many people were adults before you realized that it wasn't an actual real. <laughs> I'm the only one. Somebody lied. Somebody lied. I'm reading. I'm pretty, I'm pretty well versed, and I didn't even know. Snacks, why are you walking away? Snacks, why are you walking away? Why are you walking away? They don't articulate this stuff very well in school. So there's a lot of disinformation, a lot of misinformation, a lot of bad information, and uh, it creates a convoluted story about the history of Africans as it relates to American and world history, right? So anyway, this poem is called Track Record, and uh, it's about the Underground Railroad. You'll hear some names you probably heard before, you'll hear some that you maybe never heard before, but feel free to write them down, save them, study it for yourself, because you know, that's what it's all about, is taking information and going back doing your own research to draw your own conclusion on what you think the reality of it is, right? So, uh, let's say study to show thyself approved. I read it in a book somewhere. So this poem, right, somewhere. This poem is called, Track Record. No iron field the fields where the only steel was will, who had a skill and will to be the messenger to manufacture the message like a massage from the Messiah. I've seen the tracks of the Underground Railroad. There were no subways or trains, just blood stain, mud stains from a plane chain that had to sustain and maintain the mainframe and maintain the mind frame that when change came, they would lay claim. I've seen the tracks of the Underground Railroad. It was full of conductors who instructed and directed and protected the defectors because they understood the only crime that these men and women had committed was theft. Theft of their own black limbs. And theft of their own black heads. You see, the only crime these men had committed was theft of themselves. Yet they were indebted to the collectors in face being kidnapped and arrested. I've seen the tracks of the Underground Railroad. There was no engine or caboose. Just Lose roots from a used noose Cause he was big and black like Bruce Bruce So every day he got hit like you too 
because he refused to use his hands free like Bluetooth. They said the grass in Kentucky still appears to be blue too. Indeed, it still feeds and seeds on the blood that we bleed, but ironically, the greed is what impedes it from becoming green. I've seen the dead tattered trees along the town, Big B, in the peg leg patterns that map the pathways to the windows filled with lanterns, and you look towards Saturn and Follow the drinking gourd. Cause see, that was an old Negro spiritual when decrypted and decoded just meant that the star was north. But there was no Yaki number nine or empty 40 ounce bottles or watermelon seeds or chicken bones. You know what they found? Dead bodies and niggers' bones and they go home on acres where niggers roam and even to this day the word nigga is the only thing that niggers own. Not that I condone, I'm just a stepping stone so my more issues can be known. Instead of 40 acres in the mule, all he got was him and his nigga. So he left out the ER because the emergency room is filled with them. Victims of a vindictively vicious system that systematically willy links us and put us against us. See, I spilled beer near the pier where the murderer of Emmett Till used to chill for a thrill when he had time to kill. But everyone knows you cannot kill time. Because time kills all. But time heals all. I smell the fear on the trail once saturated with tears, arrowheads and spears, and even found a follicle of Indian hair. Because after all, they weren't here way before we. So in the beginning, the path to righteousness was not necessarily toward the north. See, in the beginning, the quest of freedom was not necessarily towards the north. There was a southern corridor in Florida where the Spaniards and Seminoles helped the Negroes because they understood that life was not just physical, it was spiritual. And you had no right to own an individual because we were America before America. I've seen the many unsung heroes, not just Frederick Douglass or Harriet that awaited a sweet chariot to swing low and carry me home. But Miss Tubman wasn't just bluffing. She knew her people were suffering. Her freedom wasn't enough. So she became the conductor and she often used to brag. Huh. My train never ran off track. I never lost one passenger. Nobody ever turned back. I've seen the tracks of the Underground Railroad. I sat upside down next to Henry Brown in a box made by Samuel Smith for shoes and socks. I read a decision of Dred Scott. I visited Harper's Ferry. I carried the casts of John Brown and Thomas Garrett. I read the Liberator by William Lloyd Garrison. I read the North Star in the book that William still authored. I crossed the waters too challenging for the martyrs. I Quivered and shivered at the river because I wasn't a good swimmer, waiting for a band of angels to deliver me to Ripley, Ohio, on the hill of liberty. I visited the homes of John Rankin and John P. Parker. I seen the patents and the business of things that he started. I walked the halls of Oberlin College, which educated the daughters. I seen the places women were once raped and bought, and I seen the faces of men beaten and slaughtered. I seen the horror. So on your next 4th of July, as you celebrate your independence, then just know that it also commemorates the day that 
the United States of America began and continued enslaving my descendants. No slaves were freed on July 4th, 1776. See, on the next 4th of July, as you celebrate your independence, just know that it also marks the day that the United States of America continued enslaving my descendants. And history will repeat that if I, you, we, us, don't keep track. Every time a man takes a glance at his stance, he will enhance his chance to advance. Thank you.